Hello guys, welcome back to my channel. It is Drew here from Lone Fox, and today we're gonna be drewing it yourself. We're gonna make some drew it yourself projects, which I am so excited about, but you guys all know, I have done videos where I've recreated viral Pinterest projects, viral Instagram projects, and now I am doing viral TikTok projects. Now, TikTok was a platform that I literally was like, I'm not gonna get on this, 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 and then one day I downloaded it and I am fully addicted now. It is basically kind of like an Instagram almost, but it's only video based, so you can scroll through and there's just like 15 second to one minute long videos that you could create and a lot of them are very funny and entertaining but they also have a section that is related to like DIY, room innovations, upcycling, crafting, thrift flip, oh my gosh, thrift flips. I don't even know what I said there. So I spent the other day going through finding some of the most viral TikTok DIY projects, and I'm going to be recreating them here for you guys today. And I'm really excited about these because they are super simple, which I think a lot of people like that about these TikTok projects because you can't film for very long. So you kind of have to make your tutorials on more of the simple side, but I'm also gonna put my very own Lone Fox flair, as you guys know, I have to do that on some of these projects as well. So if you're not already, make sure to join the Lone Fox family. I post brand new home decor and DIY videos every single week on this channel so click that red subscribe button and then don't forget to click the little bell icon next to it that way you are notified when i upload brand new videos let's get into today's video so the first project we're going to be recreating is from nomikis.art and i'm going to link these tiktok videos below for you guys so you can take a look at them this one currently has 400.8 thousand hearts which is pretty crazy 632 comments and it was shared 29,000 times so this is definitely a viral project so she basically went to the dollar store got some rope and a tray i sadly don't have a dollar tree very close to me so i actually just went to joann's to pick up some of the supplies for this but apparently you can get this from the dollar store which is great and she basically created a hanging miniature shelf and I'm gonna do the same exact thing mine's gonna be a little bit on the larger scale side and I'm gonna have a couple different flares on it but let me share with you guys how I'm going to recreate this project. Alrighty guys, so the supplies I'm using for the first project are a wooden tray, some wood stain, rope, some black cording, and scissors. And I'm starting off with the wood stain here. This is the early American wood stain. I love this color. I use it on every single project. It is literally the perfect kind of like mid-century medium brown tone. As you can see here, it's just such a great, great color. And you could do multiple coats if you want it darker, or you can even do like a really light coat if you want it lighter. I love how you can build on this color. So I'm going around and staining this entire wooden tray and as you could probably tell my wood tray is a little bit larger than hers because mine is from Joann's uh, hers was from the dollar store so maybe if you could find that one it's gonna be a little smaller but I kind of like the size of this one and I also went in with a paintbrush just to fill any tiny cracks and crevices with the wood stain the next thing that I did was used my rope and I'm going to actually loop it around she just went ahead and tied hers but I actually wanted to kind of create bindings for mine which I felt just added a little touch to the mid-century vibe and it also just gave it a little bit more of an interesting detail. I felt like hers kind of had a very farmhouse aesthetic to it, which is great if you like that vibe, but I kind of wanted mine to have almost a rustic kind of restoration hardware Urban Outfitters vibe just like a random mixture. So I went ahead, I wrapped this black cording around and this is how I'm going to be fastening the rope together. So I'm just making sure that I do it very, very tightly. And I also started with a loop. That way, when I cut the ending tail, I can push the ending tail through the loop and then you can pull the other end and it just secures that rope right on the inside to give you a clean finish on both sides. I love that tip for wrapping rope around anything. It just gives you such a nice clean finish and that finishes off the little wrapping here. And I'm just gonna cut off that excess tail Tail. Next, what we're gonna do is we're gonna find kind of where we want our hanging point to be for the wall, and we're gonna do the same exact thing. So hers was just hung over a nail just with the rope kind of wrapped around it, but I wanted to actually create a loop and just have a little bit more interest to it. So I did the same exact technique I did on the last one, pulled it through, but keep in mind, you can also just tie it if you want to. Uh, I just went ahead and did it like this, just so it matched. I just really liked the binding. I felt like it made it look a little bit more expensive. And then last step of this tutorial or project is to it just wrap it around the other end make sure that the loop is through there and you're going to just repeat the process that we did on the first and second one just to finish off this edge and once you are complete you can just cut off any excess rope and that is your finished hanging shelf Project that 
we are going to be working on is from the account called Blossom, and they're a verified account, so I'm sure they get a ton of views. This actually has 724,000 hearts, 930 comments, and it was shared 16,000 times. So this one has a lot of people like this one, and I wanted to recreate it. Now, this one is a little bit not practical because we're basically creating miniature succulent magnets, which I think are super cute, but it might be better for you guys to just do this with like faux succulents. However, I am going to be using real ones today, and I'm really excited about these because they actually are very, very cute and useful at the same time. So let's get into this one. So jumping on into these succulent magnets, I'm gonna use some newspaper, an ice cube tray, Elmer's glue, and then some paint. Uh, and I think there's a couple other materials which I'll share throughout, but I started off with half a cup of warm water and I also added in just like a random amount of glue at a good amount though because you're gonna want it to of course be nice and firm once it dries and I'm basically gonna be cutting up this newspaper into small little strips I'd probably say they're like one inch by three inch strips I just eyeballed it to create some pieces that were big enough to go over the ice cube tray and you're just going to dip them in and we are basically creating paper mache so I'm gonna place them over the top of one of the little openings and kind of crisscross them over this was my first try and I I ended up only doing three pieces and pressing it down, but I realized after doing this that it just wasn't going to be firm enough. So I actually ended up trying it a couple other ways. So my next try was going to be doing the three pieces, but doubling it. So once I did three, I actually just did the same exact three on top of it. And I didn't really like this method either. So I pressed that down. And the reason is, is because it actually had a lot of openings still. So what I ended up doing was actually fanning them out into like a section of six. So I created six of them into a full circle, which ended up working a little bit better and also making it a little bit more secure. And you're just gonna use your knuckle to kind of press it down into the ice cube tray and just make sure that it fits and forms around. And then you can also use a paper towel to blot any excess glue water out of there because sometimes you do kind of press a little bit of it out of the newspaper. So you're going to want these to actually cure overnight. And once they do cure, they're super easy to pop out. You just kind of press around the edges and they just pop out kind of just honestly like an ice cube would. So once those are all out, I trimmed off any of the excess top portion. I think in the video they folded it all in, but I ended up just trimming off any of the excess. And then I wanted to take it one step further. So I used the Mod Podge hard coat because this is a water safe finish. And I wanted to put it on the inside of our little planters because I felt this would kind of add a waterproof barrier for the succulents in case you did want to water them. So I added that barrier on the inside and then I used a couple of paints that were kind of a peachy pink tone. And then I also used a gold one and I painted these on the outside. I did two coats and I let them dry in between. And then I also did end up just leaving one as the newspaper because I kind of liked the look. And I picked up these little ceramic disc magnets and used hot glue to secure the magnets on the back. But this is kind of where everything went downhill. So I secured them on the back. I was super happy with how they looked. And then I started adding the succulents in to the little potters. And so basically these succulents are from Lowe's. They're just like miniature ones that you can use to probably put in terrariums or things like that. So how I did it was I pulled them out. Some of them came out like this and then some of them came out in the full like little clumped section. And I used a spoon to just spoon it in there. But the thing that happened, which you guys are gonna see in the final clips in a second here, is that they were just too heavy like this newspaper was not secure enough so on some of the other succulents I kind of broke up the roots a little bit and got some of the excess dirt off packed them in there but when I put them on the actual fridge they just leaned forward as if they were almost going to fall out so I don't know how exactly they got these to stay so perfectly but this was my finished result and I honestly just don't know if I love this outcome Our next project is brought to us by Riley Brown on TikTok. Now, this has 107,000 hearts, 135 comments, and 2,000 shares. So it isn't as viral as the other ones, but I thought this was such a cute idea. I really wanted to include it in this video. And basically, this is super minimal supplies. She just got a little circular kind of fishbowl glass container, some faux pearls, and then also some spray paint. And we're going to be emulating and kind of recreating a hobnail glass planter. But I'm kind of going to want mine to look a little bit more on the side of ceramic. So I'm going to 
use a couple different tips and tricks to create mine a little bit different than how she did, but I'm really excited and in love with this idea because you can create one of these hobnail style planters for a super affordable price. So let's get into this one. The supplies for this project are super minimal. You're just gonna need a glass vase, some faux pearls, spray paint, and a hot glue gun. So I started off with these pearl adhesive stickers. And what I'm gonna do is I realized they literally don't stick on here. So I don't really know how hers stuck on there. So I just placed them around and just kind of had it as a placeholder for now where I wanna put all of the pearls. But that's why I actually use the hot glue gun as well, just to really secure those on. So I went around the entire circumference of this round fishbowl vase situation and you're basically just going to stagger the pearls so you're going to do your first row and then when you go down to your second row just put them in between each of the pearls and then on your third row it's actually going to match up with your first row but you can really do whatever pattern you want i just went ahead and followed her pattern and i ended up doing i think about four rows of pearls but you can also definitely alter that and the next step is you're going to add some hot glue to the back of each of them but the nice thing is that when you first place a pearl down it's actually going to leave a little bit of the adhesive residue so you're going to be able to see where you need to replace it. And I personally found out that adding the glue directly onto the glass object was way easier than putting it on the pearl and then putting the pearl on it because I literally burned myself like three times. So I just put it directly on there. And next we are using some flat white spray paint and I'm just giving it two good coats of this spray paint. You only need to do the outside really, but you can also do the inside if you wanted to. So I went ahead and this is really gonna blend the pearls in and kind of make it look like a full complete object. And so I did two coats of that spray paint and then I went ahead and pulled out some black spray paint as well and sprayed a little bit of it into a cup. That's just because I had this on hand and it was watery. So I grabbed a hard bristle brush and I'm actually going to use my thumb and kind of flick back on the brush and create a speckled look on this vase. It gives it a very ceramic look and that finishes off your planter. And our last project is also brought to us by Blossom on TikTok, same account that did the little succulent planters. This one has 123,000 hearts, 309 comments, and 2,000 shares. So again, not like as viral as the little succulents, but this one's super cute. It's basically a DIY jewelry stand, and all you're gonna need for this is some cement mix, a little container, and a stick, and some spray paint. So not too many supplies at all. But yeah, we're gonna see how this turns out. I'm actually really excited to have this in my space, and we're just gonna jump right into this one as well. For our last project, I actually went out into the yard and looked for a stick and was able to find this one, which is amazing and perfect. You're just gonna want something that has a lot of kind of branches on it. And I was gonna spray paint it gold like they did in their tutorial, but I honestly started spraying this stick gold and it just looked kind of green and dingy. It was a not my favorite color. It had like a green tone to the gold and it just was not working for me. So I actually decided that I was gonna go back and give it a full coat of the white spray paint, which I just love this so much more. And especially if you have a white wall, this would look so great against the white wall, kind of very tone on tone, but you still have all your jewelry hanging off of it, which I just love that vibe. So I went ahead and I gave this two good coats of the white spray paint and made sure to flip it over to get every single crack, crevice and crease of this stick. Next, I have this oat container. This is just a old container that I save because I love using these for my cement projects. And I just cut kind of halfway down and I'm gonna be cutting off the top portion of this because we aren't gonna need the full container. This is actually going to be the mold for our cement. And this is some cement powder. I just get it in a huge bag at Home Depot for a couple of dollars and I've had it forever. So you're just gonna mix water in there until you get a nice kind of smooth consistency. And I'm just gonna mix that up, give it a good stir. And next what we're gonna do is we're gonna spoon this into the bottom of our oatmeal container. This literally looks kind of disgusting and I'm sorry about that, but you know, this is the life we live with DIY. So I'm gonna grab our oat container, kind of tap it up and down. This is gonna get any air bubbles out and it's also gonna settle a lot of the larger sediment to the bottom of the container, which is gonna make the top look a lot smoother. And I'm pushing my stick after it has dried down into the center. And what I did was I actually just went ahead and taped a paintbrush across the top. That way it had something to lean on while it dried. And once this is nice and secure, you're gonna let this cure overnight. And the next day you can actually cut off the oat container and that finishes off your new tree branch jewelry stand. Mm -hmm. 
So guys, that was my recreation of some DIY TikTok projects. If you are not already, you can actually follow me over on TikTok. I actually do have one. It's I'm Drew Scott. I'll put it on the screen for you guys right here. I do post DIYs over there. I actually have posted dancing videos and a ton of other embarrassing things. So if you want to check me out on TikTok, feel free to do so. And also keep in mind, TikTok is a great place for inspiration. This video is not sponsored in any way, so I'm not saying you guys have to go on TikTok. I'm just saying that I found a couple of inspiring DIY projects over there. So maybe check it out if you are bored. And if you would like me to do another round of this, please let me know in the comment section below or give this video a thumbs up. I would love to do one. And you guys already know, if you want to subscribe to my channel, click the subscribe button, turn on the bell, and we are good to go. So thank you guys so much for watching today's video. I hope that you enjoyed, and I will catch you all in my next one. Bye, guys.